Hi, Amy of Fashion Tappings here, and I wanted to give you a little update on some of the furniture that I'm working on and some of my completed projects again. I have just been kind of going crazy with this whole furniture thing and started actually selling some of my pieces. Uh, I'll show you, I have two pieces that I actually did, um, and when I listed them, one sold in 15 minutes and the other one sold in less than 24 hours, about 12 hours. And so I'm really happy about that, but I have some more pieces that I'm working on and I want to show you what I'm doing. Okay, this is the first one. I just completed it. I still have to put a coat of polyurethane on it, but that is, I'll put a before picture in. But this is one of those $5 trays that I got, and I'm actually going to put this in the farmhouse. So, that I did, and I'm going to show you how I did it. I'm going to insert a little video clip. It is so easy. I just penciled the back. I took a, I printed this picture off of the internet. I put pencil all the way across the back and then traced over the top. I'll show you. Okay, I'm going to show you how I did that home, uh, the home sweet farmhouse. I printed out a sheet that was too big, so I'm going to use this as an example. Um, so if I'm trying to copy a print, what you do is I printed this out, it's just you know a normal inkjet printer, and I printed it out to the size I needed the print to be, and you can see this would have been four sheets of paper. Um, so you take your print, you flip it over. And you can see through the paper enough that I'm taking a number two pencil and I'm just taking the edge of the pencil and I'm going to color along my whole script. I'm just going to do part of it. So, side of the pencil, it's a lot quicker and easier and it gets more lead on the paper. And you don't have to worry about this lead getting on, you know, extra lead getting on your paint. It rubs right off if it happens to, you know, get a little extra lead on your paper. Okay, so, as you can see, I just put some lead on the back of the paper. I'm going to use a sample piece of wood here. And I'm going to lay this down the way I'd want it. Okay, and then you're going to take an ink pen. I'm going to use pink so I can see it. And you're just going to trace over the entire, I'm going to try to do this so you can see it, outline of your print. If it's a thick print, you're outlining all the way around. I'm trying to trace this so you can see what I'm doing. And I come back around. It basically, what, tracing it is actually pushing the lead onto the paper underneath. I got some knots on this wood, so I'm off a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to do that, the M and the E. Okay, so I trace on this side of the paper. I traced it. Now I'm going to take it off. Even then, if you, you can faintly see it. But it's enough for you to be able to paint. Okay, then you can use any kind of paint you want. Right now, I'm just, I just grabbed a bottle that I had near me. So I'm using a green and use a nice small craft brush. I find that the ones that have the flat tip work the best for me. So you load up with a little bit of paint and you will get the free-handed look of writing on your furniture without having to actually do it freehand. You're kind of doing it freehand. You're actually painting it freehand. I found that stencils, um, my last piece of furniture, I had to sand down um, and start over just because of all the bleeding of the um, paint underneath the stencil. No matter how careful I was, I just got too impatient. And so I just, stenciling letters is just not for me. I find it much more relaxing to do the hand painted. See, so I'm just staying in the lines. This is like coloring, you know, it's like adult coloring. Okay. There 
you go. It's as easy as that to paint your own, let own lettering on furniture. So I did the, the word me just by tracing on the back of a sheet of paper with some pencil lead, flipping it over, then pressing it onto the wood. And then you have your own outline. It's just like coloring in a coloring book. Um, and now you can fill in your letters. So that one's done. That is actually going down in our little guest house. It's a little eating tray. Um, I sanded it and then I stained it because I was going to distress it. That's the only reason I stained it. I was going to distress it, but then my husband didn't want me distressing it, so I'm leaving it as is. It is white chalk paint. It's simply white by Art Minds. And I do have to say, with, when using the white with Art Minds, it took four coats, and I still have, I don't know if you can see, see, I still have streaks showing through. And that's with four coats. So I think if it was a piece that I was going to be selling, I would definitely use Annie Sloan when using the white. I did break down and actually buy a bunch of Annie Sloan paint. Um, so, and I will be putting a clear, um, either polyurethane, which I'm nervous about doing because it might yellow. Um, I might do a, uh, the Krylon UV resistant spray, or I'm going to do a wax, but I think I'm going to do the Krylon UV resistant spray because that's just safer and it's easier to get in all the nooks and crannies. So that one is done. I've got all the Harley Davidson trays primed and I'm getting ready to paint them a high gloss and then putting the Harley Davidson posters on it, which I will insert a few pictures of the posters. I had to show you, these are the posters that I had printed up from, I think it's allposters.com and you select the size, they print your posters and these are the same size as the tray, um, the Harley Davidson trays outside. I am putting these on top of the tray. I'm gonna decoupage them. And, but aren't they cute? They're pinup girls with old Harleys. There's, I got four of them. And I got two more. One to experiment with and then another one for the, because I need four good ones for the tray and I bought an extra one just to experiment with because I'm gonna soak these in water and, before I decoupage them. And since I don't know how they make their posters, I wanna make sure that it can withstand being soaked in water first because you want them to um, soften up. So. I'm going to be soaking them in water first. I will try to do a video of that. Um, I apologize. I haven't been doing videos of every project because of the fact, like I said, I jump from project to project. While one project's wet, another project I start on. And then while it's drying, I go back to the first project. So I'm actually working on like four projects at one time. It would be really hard for me to focus and take my camera with me. And I'm trying to, um, get these projects done so I can clear them out of my garage, get them sold and get my next batch of furniture in that project, um, I'll try to show you while I'm doing it. This is an upcoming project. I'm going to get some wood decals, some wood embellishments to put here to kind of give it some character. Um, I did last night come in and glue the, some spindles in so it's, it's nice and sturdy now. It's not, it's not wiggly at all. And so I'm going to actually rough that up and chalk paint it probably either cream or a light gray because I plan on selling it and that is a project I'm doing. Milk cans are still sitting there waiting for my husband. I got this glider. It's one of those glider chairs and it's mint condition. I actually got it for free. I'm going to recover it and I'm gonna paint it. Not sure how I'm gonna paint it yet because there's so many pieces in there. Haven't decided that yet, but um, I will show you when I recover the cushions. So that's an upcoming project. I just got done sanding. That's what it used to look like. I'll put a before picture in. Let me move this out. I just started sanding this piece, but we have guests down at the guest house and their kids go to bed at seven o'clock, so I had to stop sanding. Um, but I'm going to be priming this one probably tomorrow or Thursday and start painting it. But it's got the cute little feet, which I'm in the process still of sanding. And they did have painting on the side, which I had to sand off because it had texture to it. Flowers painted all over. But I thought that was really cute. I got that for free. I already stripped the top and I still have to do the drawers. So that is an upcoming project. I'll show you the stool that goes with it. Here's the stool that goes with it. It's yellowed, it, this is really old. Someone made it, I think, the, the bench. I don't think it was store-bought. I think this, this whole desk was made. 
and um, because it's, it's using a different type of lumber, so I do have to paint it. I can't stain it, uh, but I'm going to make a cushion. I'm going to sand that down, repaint it, and make a cushion for it. Like I said, I got so I got that for free, that for free, the desk for free, and I do have the doors for this. I have them sitting way over there because I'm going to be stripping it down. This is I know it's dark, but this is a pottery barn piece, and it has a clothing rack on the inside so it's like a little closet this thing is so heavy i can't move it to work on it um so i need my husband's help i started stripping the paint off the top but so i got that and let me show you something i got it i got it for free and look at how much they paid for it and it is pottery barn so i'm going to be redoing this piece um with some of my uh, fabric on the inside. I'm gonna paint it cream and uh, probably a black glaze. But the one thing is I haven't been showing, I've been trying to push these projects out the door so quickly that I'm actually, when I'm doing one project, while it's in the stage where it has to dry, like if I strip on it, it has to sit for 45 minutes, then I jump to another project. And then while that dries, I jump to another project. So it's really hard to video. Now these I just got don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet. They're so heavy, it took me and my son both to carry just one. They are extremely heavy. Um, they're kind of dated. I will be changing the knobs. Gonna paint the base, and I stripped the top, because I'm gonna try to sand the top if I can. But this one has a few bubbles. But it's a thick enough veneer, I think I can stain it. Stain. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try staining it, and if it doesn't work, then I'll just strip it down again and, and paint it. But it's got some bubbles. And I watched someone on, the, on YouTube use a hot iron and then press it down to reactivate the glue to get rid of the bubbles. So I'm gonna try that. I'll let you know if it works. So I'm painting the base of those. I'm gonna put some baskets underneath and those I will be selling as well. I got those for $10 each, which I thought was a pretty good deal. And I told you I'm working on several projects at once. Now this dresser, I've already got it sanded and there's the drawers right there. That's how glossy it used to be. But it's only a veneered, um, a veneer, so I can't stain it or anything, so this will be painted. I had my husband take the two drawers out because this is what I'm gonna do. And that drawer's pulled out just because I took the knobs off and I wanna be able to get it open. I had my husband take the drawers out, take the rails out, line it with beadboard. I still have to caulk all the, the I still have to caulk the corners, the joints, so everything is smooth. And I'm going to paint this really cute, put a cushion inside, and make this a uh, side table with a dog bed in it. So that's what that project's going to be. And I love, I'm going to have fun chalk painting with all those medallions and stuff. Get some, I'm going to make the knobs more rustic. As you can see, the knobs are right here, which is easy to do. I'm going to clean them up, chalk paint them, and then uh, polyurethane them. So that's one, and here's another dog bed I'm doing. You can see I took the two doors off. That's what the doors used to look like. Ugly. So I took the doors off. I put some wood filler in all the cracks because I don't want it to look like paneling. I have to do another layer of wood filler because um, I feel a little bit of a ridge. I'm afraid it'll show up to the paint. So I'm gonna put a little bit more wood filler in it, but I just started sanding it. But I took the doors off and the inside will also have a cushion and will be um, also a dog bed table. So I'll be selling those two. So as you can see, I've been really busy with projects and I'm gonna insert the, the picture of the two tables that I just sold. Um, you'll remember one is the Ethan Allen little magazine rack table. That one sold. Okay, I took a lot of time on this piece. This piece I got for free and um, I painted the legs cocoon from Art Minds and then I, took a um, clear wax, clear waxed it, and then dark waxed it and wiped it all down. Uh, and then the top is stained with um, dark walnut and then a clear wax on top just to finish it off and give it some protection. So both pieces sold. And my next one that is getting listed is this piece I have inside. Let me go show you. Okay, and here's my other piece. I'll put a before picture in. But I, white, I painted it, the lighting is terrible in here. I painted it um, 
Valspar Aged Gray. Then I whitewashed on top. I'll show you the whitewash. And those knobs are actually wood, actually carved wood, the same, um, same wood as the, the unit itself. But I put some Waverly red paint on the roses and then whitewashed a pink over it. And then I painted the leaves um, with just some of my um, folk art green paint. So I did the roses and then I put a little bit of that pink down there to draw the two together. And then I white waxed over the whole thing. But look at the beautiful legs on this. It had a broken foot, which you can't even see. I, um, my husband, uh, it, it had already been repaired when I got it, but they left the big crack. So I put wood filler in it and you can't see the crack at all. And it's nice and sturdy. The top I did one shade darker. Can't really tell. I just added a little bit of, um, of a darker blue into the gray and then I whitewashed it. You see the whitewash? Just to give it some texture. I was going to stencil on the top, but I just figured this is gonna probably go to a little girl's room and so I wanted to keep it simple. I still have to wax and, or do um, a final wax and buff, but I'm letting the white wax dry because I don't want the clear wax to pull the white wax up. So this is, like I said, Valspar, um, Valspar Aged Gray, whitewashed on top with some watered down Simply White um, from Art Mines, I believe is the brand, Simply White. Um, but I watered it down. I put it two parts water to one part paint. And then I just brushed it on and then wiped it off. And then I waxed it with white wax. But I love how the roses and stuff turned out. And then inside the drawers, I decoupaged. So I decoupaged just some flowers on the side. I decoupaged that before I painted the roses. The roses were originally blue, but on a Facebook page that I belong to, everybody suggested I needed a pop of color, so they had me paint them red. So, like how it turned out, that's the next one that's going up for sale. Just have to get it um, buffed and shined on the top and get it staged and get some pictures taken, and that's my next one that's gonna be going up for sale. So that is another piece. Okay, and this is the fabric. I told you about, I was gonna put fabric inside of that big armoire. I'm gonna line the inside of the fabric with this beautiful cherub. Let's see, turn this way so you can see it. This beautiful cherub fabric that I got at an estate sale. I was trying to choose between that and that, but I think I like the cherub better, especially it'd probably be going in someone's bedroom. So I'll be painting the whole hutch to match this lining it on the inside back walls with this and then doing like a black glaze on the outside and wiping it out uh, wiping it off to give it an aged look so that is what i'm going to be doing to the armoire now i also got these for free and how i got them for free is i i, I responded to an ad about a free end table first come first serve so i was the first one there got the end table Got to talking with a nice couple, told them how I'm painting furniture, and they, they walked, me, walked me around and showed me everything I can have for free. So I ran and got my sons, and we went back, and my sons and I uh, hauled all the furniture home. So, But they sent, gave me these lamps, and uh, they're amazing. They are opalescent glass. There's a light bulb that goes inside this glass that lights up the glass. I don't know the age, the era, I don't know anything about them. On the bottom, it just says MC Co GIM 6144, which is pretty common. And I have not, I've gone all through the internet trying to find a picture of these lamps so I can find out the era, um, uh, how much they're worth, because I, I, I really love them. I want to keep them, but if I sell them, I don't want to like give them away either. So those are absolutely stunning. And I'm going to show you what I did with the lampshades. Okay, this lampshade, I'm gonna put in a before picture, was so stained, but it's such a nice lampshade. The inside has a layer, so it covers the wires, and um, it's such a beautiful shape, but it, like I said, it had a lot of stains on it, and I have one for each lamp, and both of them had like water rust marks going all the way up them. So what I did is I filled my bathtub um, halfway up with Dawn dishwashing liquid, 
and warm water. Not hot, not cold, just warm water. Got it nice and bubbly. I then took the, the lampshade and kept it bouncing it up and down in the water and then rubbing it with my hands because the dawn would get the grease out. And um, so I actually scrubbed with my hand and I got every one of the water stains out of this thing. So now it looks brand new. I don't have to get new shades. I believe it's probably the original shades with it. But um, I'm thrilled to death that I was able to save the shades. So I got that. Okay, and then on the estate sales, <laughs> I scored so much fabric. Look at all this fabric. So I've got this big bolt, I mean a big bolt of this blue, like it has little three dots on them. It's so pretty. So I got this fabric. Um, I paid $5 for it. I got a whole bolt, also a bolt of it. These are all bolts. Um, of this gorgeous flowers, which would be nice decoupaged or put in the back of an armoire. That I thought about this for that armoire, but then it limits it just to a feminine room. So I got that fabric. I got some nice um, checkered, like picnic table checkered country, which would be really cute on some chairs. So I'm holding on to that bolt for the chairs. Let me see what they paid for this. I didn't even see this price tag on it. So there's three and uh, a little over three yards in there and they paid $20, I paid five. So that's not too bad, so I got that. And then, because this is an upholstery shop that was doing an estate sale. So they're also selling, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but they're also selling, their sample sheets are big enough to do a cushion. See, these are samples. And then it has a bunch of other colors, so I could use this accents, but that's big enough to do a cushion. And it has little bees on it and some, blue, you know, like, uh, seersucker stripes. Isn't that cute? And then you have all the different colors for accents that I can use also for a project. So these I got for 50 cents each. And I have an entire bag. Look at that. An entire bag full. Look at, I mean, look at all these. They're all 50 cents a piece. And they're all just as big as this B one. I'm so excited about that. And this one I'm going to use for a special project. This one, isn't that gorgeous, a piece of fabric? It is um, like a tapestry, but it's got some cute houses on it, and some people, flowers. I thought that was so cute, and I got it for 50 cents, and that's enough also to do a large cushion. And then a small sample, which would work for decoupaging of, it's just a little bit lighter color. Isn't that cute? So I got a whole bag of those, and um, they were 50 cents a piece. <laughs> and I, did, I got a ton of them, so I'm excited. So I have a lot of fabric that I can be using for my projects. Okay, so I just wanted to update you on the projects I'm working on right now. Yes, I haven't gotten up to the sewing machine yet, <laughs> but it is starting to cool off now. So as soon as it starts cooling down, um, I'll be more tempted on going upstairs. Uh, but like I explained in my last videos, it is pretty hot up there if I have to turn the air conditioning off and the fans off um, because of the background noise. So. I will get my sewing project started. I just, I'm having so much fun with the furniture. And I just wanted you to see the amount of projects I'm working on. Um, the two finished products are two pieces that I've already finished and sold. One that's finished just has to be top coated and buffed, uh, buffed and everything else so it's ready to be staged and sold. And I will keep you up to date on all the rest of those projects that are out there because I'm trying to move very qu quickly on it. And then also, I'm hoping that I will have um, some good news for you towards the end of September, but I can't say anything yet because I don't want to jinx it. And if it doesn't happen, you know, I don't want to say anything. So I just want to give you a heads up that I have something else in the works. And okay, well, that's about it. Well, this is Amy of Fashion Toppings. Until next time, you have a great day.